The title of my talk today is on the update and treatment of endometriosis. Endometriosis is a very common condition where abnormal endometrial-like tissues are found outside the uterus. The common sites of endometriosis in pelvics are on the ovary, cul-de-sac, neutral sacral ligament, posterior surface of uterus, posterior broad ligament, rectal vaginal septum, fallopian tubes, and round ligaments, and cervix. Outside the pelvic, endometriosis can be found on the intestine, rectal sigmoid, cecum, terminal ileum, appendix, proximal colon, urinary tract system, which included bladders and ureter, Last and not least, in the lung and thorax. The reported prevalence of endometriosis is between 6 and 10% of women of reproductive age, 50% in the infertile couple, and more than 60% in patients with chronic pelvic pain. Yet endometriosis is underdiagnosed. Several studies have reported a long delay from the onset of uh, symptoms till the diagnosis of endometriosis. Endometriosis has long-term implications. It is a chronic and recurrent disease that can have a significant impact on women's general physical health, emotional well-being, and daily routine. Some women with endometriosis may require fertility treatment. Severe endometriosis with bowel involvement require bowel resection and stoma. Ovarian cancer risk is between 27 to 80% higher in women with endometriosis. Endometriosis can cause bladder problem, silent kidney loss, premature menopause, and also medical legal problem. Endometriosis trigger a chronic inflammatory reaction resulting in pain and adhesions. Adhesion develop when scar tissue attach different structures or organs together. The activity and the complaints due to endometriosis may vary during women's menstrual cycle as hormone level fluctuate. This is a laparoscopic image of a normal uterus. We can see left ovary, right ovary, right fallopian tube, left fallopian tube, uterus sacral ligament, posterior surface of the uterus, QD sac, ovarian fossa. This is a laparoscopy image of ovary with adhesion. This is a laparoscopy image of a 28 years old lady presented with a history of irregular menstrual cycle, intermenstrual bleeding and acute onsets of severe acne. On this laparoscopy image, the uterus is covered extensive uh, with dense adhesion. On the further assessment, we can see the adhesion is attached between the uterus and the small bowel, fallopian tubes with the small bowel, and also on the left side, we can see the left fallopian tubes and left ovarian fossa were covered with adhesion. In the last uh, laparoscopy image in this patient, we can see endometriosis is presented as a yellow or golden color liquid in a sac at the posterior surface of the uterus. There are free fluid in the pelvis, which is the blood inside the pelvis. On the same laparoscopy image, we can also see there are endometriosis uh, growing on the surface of the ovary. 
Endometriosis symptom may be worse at certain times in the cycle, particularly just prior to and during the woman's menstrual period. While some women with endometriosis may experience severe pelvic pain, others have no symptoms at all. Some women may regard their symptom as being just ordinary menstrual pain. The common gynecological symptoms of endometriosis are dysmenorrhea or painful menstruation, non-menstrual pelvic pain or pain occurring when a woman is not menstruating, dyspareunia or painful intercourse, irregular or heavy periods, infertility. The non-gynecological symptoms of endometriosis are cyclical intestine complaints which included bloating, diarrhea or constipation, pain related to bowel, bladder, lower back pain or top of their legs, cyclical dysuria, painful urination, cyclical hematuria or presence of blood in the urine, long-term fatigue. The sign or symptoms of endometriosis on the bowel are abdominal cramp and pain, bloating, indigestion, pain on opening the bowel, dyscursia, deep pelvic pain during intercourse, dyspareunia, in some cases rectal bleeding during a period, constipation or diarrhea. Symptoms for endometriosis on bladder may vary with the menstrual cycle, tends to be worse in the day before and during periods. The signs and symptoms of endometriosis on the bladder are bladder irritation, bladder urgency, which is the need to pass the urine, pain when the bladder is full, occasional blood is present in the urine during a period, in some cases, the women may complain loin pain in the area of the kidneys. As the severity of the endometriosis increases, scar tissue or adhesions become more common and the chance of natural conception can decrease. Endometriosis make it difficult to become pregnant. In fact, 50% of infertile women have endometriosis. Endometriosis can influence fertility in several ways. It distorted the anatomy of the pelvis. It causes adhesion, scar the fallopian tubes. Endometriosis also causes inflammation of the pelvic structure, alter immune system functioning, changes in the environment of the eggs, impair implantation of the pregnancy, and alter egg quality. In this laparoscopy image, in a 28 years old lady who presented with uh, severe dysmenorrhea and bloating and with a mildly raised CA125 at the level 45, we can see this uh, hydrosalping, which is fallopian tubes is swollen and is covered with a sticky slimy liquid, which is uh, endometriosis. Hydrosalping uh, is a fallopian tube that will block fluid inside the fallopian tube. In the same patient, we can see her right ovary is attached with a small bowel. This is a laparoscopy image of a 39 years old lady who presented with chronic anemia and uh, ovarian cysts. As we can see on this uh, picture here, she has a severe endometriosis with the left ovarian cyst, the endometrioma which is attached to the small bowel and the right fallopian tubes is attached to the ovarian cyst and the uterus is covered with extensive endometriosis. The risk factor for endometriosis are family history of endometriosis, early age of monarchy, less than 11 years old, short menstrual cycle less than 27 days, 
long duration of menstrual flow, more than seven days, heavy bleeding during menses, inverse relationship to priority, delayed childbearing, defects in the uterus or fallopian tubes. The exact cause of endometriosis remain unknown. There are several theories hypothesized. The most accepted theories is central on the so-called retrograde menstruation, where during menses, pieces of endometrium arrive in the abdominal cavity through the fallopian tubes, adhere to the peritoneal lining and develop into endometriotic lesions. Endometriosis is estrogen dependent. Subsequently, most of the current hormonal treatment for endometriosis are to attempt to lower estrogen production in a woman's body in order to relieve their symptom. Endometriosis can also be a genetic disease since some families show more patients with endometriosis compared to others. Other suggestions are an immune response triggering inflammation. In this picture here, we can see an antiverted uterus where the periods will come through the vagina easily by gravity. In the retroverted uterus, the womb is tilted backward towards the spine, so there will be a lot of backflow of a period or menses uh, into the abdomen during periods. Adenomyosis. Adenomyosis is a condition where endometriosis occurs within the myometrium and we get, it causes menstrual cramps, lower abdominal pressure and bloating before menstrual period. It can also result heavy periods. This is the ultrasound picture uh, for endometriosis. We can see on this ultrasound picture here, they are heterogeneous, means the color appeared to be different on the texture of the myometrium. They are hyperechoic, which is darker area on the myometrium, loss of endo and myometrium interface. They are myometrial cysts, which is appear on the uterus. When we apply color doppler on the ultrasound, we can actually see increased vascularity on the area of where the endometriosis, which is adenomyosis, uh, on the ultrasound inside the myometrium. So we can see here, there are increased vascularity with the red and blue color appear on the area of the myometrium by using color doppler on ultrasound. And this is a myometriosis in the bulky and large uterus this is a laparoscopy images of a 30 years old lady who presented to the gynecological clinic with abnormal vaginal discharge. Further following investigation, we found her uterus was uh, enlarged and we used the color Doppler. We found out that she has adenomyosis from her ultrasound investigation. On this laparoscopy image, we can see endometriosis is growing on the surface of an enlarged bulky uterus who is actually a nullic virus who has no history of childbirth. And the posterior surface of the same uh, patient uterus, we can see the small bowel is actually attached to the posterior surface of the uterus and then the uterus appeared to have all these endometriosis grow on the surface. Uterus is very wide and uh, they are free fluid, which is blood in the pouch of Douglas. After removing the blood, we can actually see at the back wall, which is a uterosacral ligament, and we can see uh, endometriosis growth on the uterosacral ligament and also on the ovary surface. This is a laparoscopy images of another patient. 
she presented to the gynecological clinic with recurrent UTI. She complained that she has to have antibiotic injection monthly for her bladder infection. What we can see here, the uterus was bulky with an abnormal shape and there are some and the uterus looked very inflamed at the uterosacral ligament, some adhesion on the left ovary. There are endometriosis growing on her ovary on inspection. And her left ovary has chocolate cysts, which is the endometrioma, where the endometriosis is growing inside the ovary. The first line of investigation for endometriosis is transvaginal ultrasound or abdominal ultrasound. The features of uh, endometriosis uh, which can appear on the ultrasound are ovarian endometrioma which sometimes can affect both ovaries. Uterus and or both ovary are fixed and non-mobile. Free fluid in the pelvis can be detected in the ultrasound. Hydrosalpings, where the fallopian tube appeared like a sausage shape on the ultrasound. Uterus can also be adhered to the pelvic side wall, which is either left or right. On this image here, we can see there's a hemorrhagic or chocolate cyst fill up the whole ovary. Kissing ovary, uh, kissing ovarian endometrioma means both ovary with uh, chocolate cysts is appear on the ultrasound touching each other. This is a laparoscopy image of a 20 years old university student who was detected by the GP with a raised CA125. Her laparoscopy image shows that they are kissing ovary with severe endometriosis. fluid in pelvics on MRI scan or ultrasound is a very non-specific finding. However, anything causes inflammation of the organs in the pelvics can be associated with fluid there. For example, endometriosis in which tissue from the uterus escape into the abdominal cavity which could cause this free fluid in the pelvic. We can see on this ultrasound picture, there is free fluid in the, behind the uterus, which appeared like a dark color. And on this image here, we can see free fluid on the anterior wall of the uterus and also posterior wall of the uterus. This is a 3D ultrasound of the uterus. We can see here on a normal uterus, uh, in the coronal view, we can see the uterus is appeared to be cavity uh, uh, vertical. The uterine cavity, that's where the baby is actually implanted, we can see is straight. On the endometriosis uh, ultrasound, 3D image ultrasound, we can see the axis of the uterus is actually deviated to the side wall, either left or right. Other methods uh, which include MRI, CT scan or CA125 can be used as a guide in making a diagnosis or in helping to assess the extent of the disease of endometriosis. Serum CA125 is elaborated in about 80% of women with advanced epithelial ovarian cancer but the elevated levels has also been associated with endometriosis. This is a laparoscopy image of a 39 years old lady with severe endometriosis with dense adhesion. We can see the uterus is attached to the small bowel at the posterior wall of the uterus. However, a CA125 is moderately raised at the level of 98. Laparoscopy is the gold standard uh, test for the diagnosis of endometriosis. It is the only way to give us the definite diagnosis of endometriosis. 
It also allows us to assess and provide treatment for endometriosis. This is a laparoscopic image of a 32 years old lady presented with about three years history of primary infertility. She complained of intermenstrual bleeding and bloating. What we can see this laparoscopic image here, the patient has a subserosa uterine fibroid and uh, there are some adhesion uh, at the QT sac. On the further assessment on the same patient, we can see endometriosis growth at the uterus sacral ligament on the left side and there are adhesion and some free fluid which is blood inside the pelvis. We can see blood cysts, you know, like a sac appear attached on the right ovary, which coincide with a complaint or intermenstrual bleeding. On the same patient, we can see extensive free fluid blood in the QD sac. At the end of the surgery, we've managed to treat her completely by removing several fibroids and also remove the endometriosis and concurrently we also perform the fallopian tube checking by, perform, by doing the dye test. The treatment options for endometriosis includes uh, painkiller, pain relieving drugs, reduce inflammation and help to ease the pain. Hormonal treatments are suppressive but not curative therapy. These hormonal treatments are also contraceptive and will prevent patients from becoming pregnant. Surgical treatment for endometriosis included laparoscopy surgery, which is the most commonly performed it allows definite diagnosis, assessment of severity of endometriosis and treatment of endometriosis. The treatment of surgical uh, endometriosis included excision of endometriosis nodule or growth, diatomy of endometriotic patches. At the same time, laparoscopy also allowed us to check the patency of the fallopian tubes. Laparotomy, which is an open surgery, will be performed for endometriosis if endometriosis involves bowel and require bowel resection and possibly malignancy. Drug treatments have not been found to improve fertility Laparoscopy surgery by removing the ovarian cysts, adhesion, and the nodules of endometriosis has been found to increase the chance of conception, whether by natural or assisted conception, IVF. The next slide, we're going through a case discussion. This is a 44 years old Nali Paris lady she presented with chronic pelvic pain, menorrhagia, and primary infertility. She complained of long-term fatigue. She was on years of traditional Chinese medicine. Her past surgical history included laparoscopy surgery at a Kaleao private hospital and several IVF treatment approximately three years ago. She is unaware of the severity and staging of her endometriosis disease. She informed that her CA125 level was raised approximately 85 uh, uh, in the last six months. Her transvaginal ultrasound showed an antiverted uterus with a 2.8 uh, centimeter endometrial polyp with left ovarian cysts endometrioma measure 5.5 cm and her right ovary is normal. We can see here, this is her blood test result. 
On admission, she was found to have her hemoglobin uh, to be 88 gram per liter, which is severely anemic. A liver function test was deranged. The patient complained that she was on a Chinese herb for years. That's the reason why her liver function test was abnormal. And the next thing we can see, uh, the tumor marker, the female tumor marker, where the CA19.9 CA is severely raised, you can see 406, where the normal level is only less than 32. And on her last report, we can see her CA125 was actually 463, which is very high and there's more than 80% chance of ovarian cancer from the risk malignancy index calculation. In conclusions, endometriosis is a very common disease which has significant impact on patients' physical health, social and mental well-being. It is important to remain to have high index of some suspicion and a low threshold for referral for endometriosis. Early diagnosis and referral to subspecialized gynecologists for proper management is recommended. Laparoscopy is the only method to obtain the definite diagnosis. Thank you for listening.